Hello everybody and welcome to Madden Science. In today's episode, we're looking closely at conversions. Conversions are sometimes called dimensional analysis. And these are gonna be some of the most important things that we learned this year in science. They're gonna be the bedrock for doing calculations in this class and calculations beyond in your science career. So for physics, chemistry, and biology. Keep in mind that with this video, you can stop it pause it, rewind it, go back and review some of these problems and questions so that you're crystal clear. Here's our general setup for a dimensional analysis or conversion problem. Notice that you're starting with a beginning or starting amount, 24 inches. You then have an end amount that you're searching for, which would be how many feet is 24 inches. And then in the center, it's going to be our equivalency statement or our equal amounts. You'll note that this is seen on your conversion sheet. So we're gonna follow along with that same basic setup. I want to keep in mind that conversions are everywhere. They're all around us. You can see them here in terms of cooking, you got the American system, metric system. These are a whole mess for me to try and remember. A lot of people have a magnet at home. You'll see it in your chemistry career with peace, love, and stoichiometry. So as we're doing some of these more basic or simple problems, keep in mind that soon enough, the difficulty level is going to ramp up and you'll have balancing equations and looking for reactants and products in chemistry with stoichiometry. Some of the more basic conversion factors and conversion problems that you can do would involve transitions from the more basic metric prefixes. So from centimeters to meters, or maybe liters to kiloliters. We'll come back around and begin with those. You could also see that conversions take place with a currency exchange, whether it's from American dollars to euros, or maybe you want to think about your top international destination Maybe this time you want to go to Kenya and see how far your dollar can go in shillings. Or perhaps you back around the globe and travel to Peru and you want to see how many U.S. dollars, say 100 U.S. dollars, would convert to in the Peruvian soul. Let's start with a problem that's fairly basic. 2.45 centimeters converted into meters. If you follow along with this, we'll start with a big old line separating the top and bottom of the fraction, so numerator and denominator, parentheses and an equal sign. You have on your left your starting amount, in the middle is your equal amount, so your equivalency statement, and in the end is your end amount or your product or your final answer. Going up top in the numerator, you have 2.45 centimeters. You want to convert that to meters, so meters must go on the top, centimeters must go on the bottom in order to be canceled out. From there, you need to look for your equivalency amount. How many meters equals how many centimeters? Or how many centimeters equals how many meters? Maybe we recall that centi means one hundredth. Or maybe you can refer back to your conversion sheet. And in that, you'd know that one meter equals one hundred centimeters. Feel free also to look at an actual meter stick where you can count off one hundred centimeters equaling one meter. The answer then, 2.45 centimeters divided by 100 equals 0 0.0245 meters. Now this statement, that middle part is gonna be what we focus on now is a really key component. It has to equal one. No matter what, that equivalency statement in the center needs to equal one. It's the only way that it's legal. If we back up, you'll see we're taking 2.45 multiplied by something and that needs to still equal. So the only way you can multiply something by another thing and have it still remain the same is to multiply it by one. So we got our equivalency statement equal of one. Don't forget, the number one, baby. If you don't know or you're unsure of your metric prefixes, go ahead and take a look at your sheet and it shows it on there. And you'll notice underneath centi, it says it 100 centi units equals one base unit. We could apply the same reasoning in practice for 524 liters equals how many kiloliters. 
Now think back to our homework on our conversion collage and show and tell. Here's an equivalency statement shown with a weight. We know that one kilogram equals 2.2 pounds. Here we see that 45 pounds also equals 20.4 kilograms. This can be seen on all sorts of products from any liquid or Windex. It's showing our 40 fluid ounces equals one quart, eight fluid ounces, or 1.18 liters. You've got conversion factors all over your food. It's got six cans with a weight of 26.4 ounces, or 750 grams. Not to mention the number of conversions or equivalency statements that are listed in the nutritional labels, whether on sardines or on this container here, or any kind of you know, nutrition bar. You've got plenty of other conversion factors and equivalency statements listed. Let's try another problem. Here it is with the Leaning Tower of Pizza with people are always wondering, hey, Mr. Man, how tall is that? Well, it turns out it's 56 meters. So if the question is then, how tall is the Leaning Tower of Pizza in feet? We can do that problem. Let's follow along. Starting here, we've got 56 meters, big line underneath it with our parentheses, equals how many feet? So on the left, we have our starting product, in the middle, our equivalency statement, and on the right, we've got our end point or our answer. We then want to take our units that we want to end up with feet and place it on the top of our equivalency statement, and meters goes on the bottom. Meters will then cancel. We can then look back and refer to our sheet right here, and we see that one meter is equal to 3.28 feet. We can then multiply 56 times 3.28 and we get 183.68 or 183.7 feet. If we continue to the next problem with sporks, well hey, how much does a spork weigh? What is its mass? Turns out that a spork is 25 grams. Let's see if we convert that 25 grams into kilograms. Let's follow along. You start with 25 grams a big old line, our parentheses, equals, and we want to convert grams into kilograms. So kilograms is going to go up top. From there, we can put kilograms in the top of our equivalency statement and grams on the bottom so that the grams cancel each other out. We then can refer to our conversion sheet and realize that kilo means thousand, and therefore one kilogram means 1,000 grams, and those are equal. They have to equal what? So one gram divided by 1,000 grams equals one, and thus 25 times one divided by 1,000 is gonna leave us with 0 0.025 kilograms. Okay, last problem. Let's imagine how fast a car moving 54 meters per second is going if you were to convert that into miles per hour. So starting, we're going to write out 54 meters per second and set that equal to miles per hour. Now it might be helpful to get an idea. Just imagine or go grab a meter stick and envision 54 of those things covered in one second. That's pretty darn fast. Now we're going to need to make two conversions. The first being on the top from meters to miles and the second, the bottom portion of our units, which would be seconds into hours. We're gonna go ahead and set this up, starting with 54 meters per second. We're gonna get a big line underneath that. And because we need to convert for two different sets of units, we're gonna go ahead and set up from the beginning two sets of parentheses, and then an equal sign. And at the end, we're gonna be given the units that we want, which are miles per hour. Now, we're going to want to go from meters to miles, which means that miles is going to go on the top of our first equivalency statement, and meters will go on the bottom. Therefore, meters will cancel. We can then look up and see that, in fact, one mile is equal to 1,609 meters. Okay, so our units at this point are meters, or sorry, miles per second, 
we need to then convert seconds into hours. Since hours is at the bottom, we can put hours at the bottom of the second equivalency statement and seconds on the top, so it cancels. This equivalency statement is then one hour is equal to 3,600 seconds, which is in effect 60 times 60 seconds. If we plug that in, we're then multiplying 54 times 3,600 divided by 1609. That gives us a final answer of 120.8 miles per hour. From here, it's a good place to pause it and see if you have any questions. Also, take a look back in your notes. You should have a few other problems, like this one with our Instagram feed. So you got 12 likes in the first minute. How many likes can you expect in an hour? Assume in the same rate. Or two outs equals how much of an inning? And lastly, you're really hungry. So you eat 18 donuts. How many donuts is that? All right, on that delicious note, we'll end. Make sure you see me if you have any more questions. Take care.